All right, these are the notes that go along with volume and surface area of composite figures. Example one, how many cubic feet of popcorn does this canister hold? The first thing that I want you to see is cubic feet. That should be your hint that you're looking for volume, okay? So we're gonna try and find the volume. All right. I have two shapes. I have a rectangular prism and I also have a cylinder. Okay, so let's talk about the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism. The volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. You have that in your notes. And to that we need to add the volume of a cylinder. Now remember volume is the area of the base. The base of a cylinder is a circle so I need to use pi r squared. Pi r squared times the height of my cylinder, which is h. Okay, so let's just plug in some numbers and see what we get for our volume. All right, so the volume equals 14 times 8 times 12 plus the volume of the cylinder which is 3.14 times 4 squared times 8, the height of my cylinder. All right, I'll give you a second to do some calculations here and hopefully you come up with the volume is 1,745.92 feet squared. Okay, so we could actually type out this container holds 1,745.92 cubic feet. Do you see what I did there? This is cubic feet and I put squared last time. It's a good thing that I actually talked that out. So let's fix that because we all know that volume is cubic not squared. Alrighty, perfect, that looks much better. All right, example number two. John wants to paint, and that should be John wants, to paint his barn. One gallon of paint covers 100 square feet. How many gallons of paint will John need? All right, so when we talk about John painting, and we see the words square feet, that should tell us that John is going to, we're, what we're trying to find here is actually going to be surface areas because square feet implies surface area. Okay, so we have square feet and that's talking about surface area. So let's see what kind of shapes we have here. Now remember surface area is the covering, but we need to talk about this a little bit, okay? So um, first of all, we can talk about the two shapes that we have. For the surface area, we have a rectangular prism and we have a triangular prism. Okay, now the thing is John is painting so I want you to think about what you actually paint. So if this is his barn, do you think John's going to paint the bottom of the barn? Do you think he's actually going to paint the bottom layer, this down here? Do you think that that bottom layer is going to get painted? I would say probably not. Just the same as he's not going to paint the ceiling because we don't see that. We have a triangular prism on top of that. So actually the things that John um, is really going to paint, the places that John are, is going to apply paint would be the ones that I highlight right here. He'll paint the front of the barn and the back of the barn so we can calculate the area of that. And since those two shapes are congruent, we can calculate the area of one and add them together. He is also going to paint the sides of the barn, 
the right side, as well as the left side. Okay. I don't think John is going to paint his roof. He probably has a nice um, roof and doesn't want to paint that, but he probably will paint these front triangular pieces. And those are also congruent to one another. Okay. So let's see. The surface area is really um, not an exact formula. So we're going to calculate the surface area of the front and the back. So I have 2 times um, 15 times, and how tall is this? 18. Okay, so 2 times 15 times 18, and we multiply it by 2 because there's a front and a back. Then we need to figure out the area of this shape right here, and it looks like it's 45 by 18. So I have 2 times 45 times 18, and to that I'm going to add the um, area of those triangles. So I have two triangles times one half times um, the base of my triangle looks like 15 and if you see back here the height of that is 12. So times 15 times 12. Okay. So when I do some calculations here I find out that the surface area is 540 plus 1620 plus 180 which equals 2340 square feet. Now the problem is the question doesn't ask us how many square feet is John going to paint. The question is how many gallons of paint will he need. So we're going to take that total and we're going to divide it by 100, okay, to determine the number of gallons. Now, we know that when we divide by 100, that's the same thing as moving the decimal place over two times. So he's going to need 23.4 gallons of paint. Probably it would be better to round up since you can't buy partial gallons of paint. So we're going to say that John will need 24 gallons of paint. Okay, all right. Let's do one more example. This says find the volume and the surface area of the composite figure. So let's talk about volume first. It looks like I have a rectangular prism, length times width times height. And to that, I'm going to add the volume of a triangular prism, which, remember, is the area of the base. So 1 half times the area of the base, which is a triangle, base times height, times height of my prism. So let's just plug in some numbers here, okay? So the volume of the rectangular prism is 4 times 2 times 3. And to that, we're going to add one-half times the base of my triangle. Now if I look at the base of my triangle I can see that the base of my triangle, here's the base and here's the height. Okay, so I have a base of four and a height of three. So the base is four times a height of three times the height of my prism. Now this right here is the height of my prism, which is a little bit different. Remember that this triangular prism is actually laying on its side. So this really tells me how tall it is right here. This tells me how tall it is, and that measurement is 2. So we're going to multiply this by 2. Okay, so now let's do some calculations here. All right, 4 times 2 times 3. Is 16, uh, sorry, 4 times 2 times 3 is 24. 8 times 3 is 24, yeah. Plus um, 12. So the volume actually equals 36 centimeters, and it's volume, so 36 centimeters cubed.
All right. Now let's talk about surface area because that's going to be a little bit different. For the surface area, I have a rectangular prism. So my formula for surface area, remember, is 2 times the area of my base, which is a length width, plus the perimeter of my base, capital P, times the height of my prism. Okay, And that would be for the rectangular prism. And to that, we're going to add the formula for a triangular surface area of a triangular prism, which is 2 times one half base times height plus capital P which is the area of the base times the height. So those formulas we can plug in some numbers and get an, a good answer. However, there's something that we need to think about. Surface area is covering an object and this piece right here, this that I'm highlighting, is the top of the rectangular prism and it is also a side on the triangular prism. We're not adding those. So from this total, from this total, we are going to have to subtract this shape twice because I'm going to subtract it from the top of my rectangular prism and then the side of my triangular prism. Okay? So the area of this shape is a four, this looks like a four by two. If you see, that is four times 2, so the area of that is going to be 8. So from this shape, we're going to subtract 16. Surface area, like I said in class, can be a little confusing, especially when we talk about composite shapes because you have to think about where they match up. All right? So let's put some numbers in here. I have 2 times the length, which is 4, times the width, which is 2, plus the perimeter of my base. Well, again, let's look at the perimeter of the base here. I have 4 plus 2, plus 4, plus 2, so that should give me um, 8, 10, 12, okay? So the perimeter of my base is 12, um, and to that we're going to multiply the height of this prism, which is 3, plus um, 2 times, now let's calculate the surface area of our triangular prism. So 2 times 1 half times the base of my triangular prism we already discussed was 4. The height is 3 and to that we're going to add the perimeter. Now this is a right triangle and I know that 3, 4, and 5 make a very nice Pythagorean triple. We've talked about that several times. Okay. If you didn't know that you would have had to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so hopefully you remember that from class. So perimeter is going to be 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 12, times the height of my prism, which is 2. And then from that whole thing, we're going to subtract 16. Okay. So my surface area equals. 2 times 4 times 2 so I have 16 plus 12 times 3, which is 36, plus 2 times 1 half is just 1, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 12 times 2 is 24, minus 16. All right, so when I figure all that out, I should get 72 centimeters, and we're talking about surface area, so that is squared. Okay. All right, so your homework is going to be to finish the problems that were on your worksheet from the 6.8, Lesson 6.8, as well as the worksheet that's attached to your notes. There are three questions attached to your notes. Good luck.